This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Kravitz, love to talk to Steve because uh, we just start talking and we enjoy each other and you know, it's not in a sexual way, folks. <laughs> Go ahead. How are you doing, Alex? Yeah, I'm doing Hello, just fine. folks. Yep. Folks at home. Yep. Yeah, let me get my arrow out of the picture here. There we go. Okay. What well, arrow? Go. Yeah. How you doing? I'm a little frustrated with my phone. Your phone? My phone will stop talking to my car. Wait a minute, wait, hold on a second. Your phone was, oh, you mean you had it hooked into your car so that right. when you used it, it came out over your speakers or whatever, right? Right, and, and the GPS. Yeah, well, that's a, supposedly all you have to do is you have to pair it. I think maybe it got unpaired or something. No, the Bluetooth won't, won't it, it won't recognize the Bluetooth on the old, I got a replacement phone, Yeah. but they sent just a phone wrapped up in bubble wrap Yeah. with a, with a SIM card. And the SIM card is too small for the SIM card tray, so it just falls through. <laughs> so now I have to Wait. slept all the way across town to go stand in line at the Spectrum store. So they gave you a new phone. Something went wrong with your old phone, right? Right, right, right. right. I got the new phone. The yeah. new phone came today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It didn't come in a box. It came wrapped up in bubble wrap yeah. with uh, an external SIM card. And when I, you know, I uh, got the SIM card tray out, I put the card in and it just fell through. Oh, wow. You know? So you went back to the Spectrum store. No, I have to go back to the store after we're done. Oh, okay. And wait in line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, Pain in the ass. So uh, the new phone doesn't pair with your car. No, the new phone doesn't work at all. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. The old phone didn't pair with the car. That's why I got the new phone. I see. But why wouldn't it pair? Usually Bluetooth never goes out. Right. You know. Right. I don't know. Maybe the phone just, it worked on a Tuesday. It stopped working on Wednesday. Yeah, I find Bluetooth is probably more reliable even than Wi-Fi. Yeah. Because it's what they call near a near field device. In right. other words, it's it only it it would only work say within the room you're in, right. okay, or or uh, maybe twenty five feet, and that's right. it. So it's it's it doesn't seem to have the problems. I have problems with Wi Fi a lot. Really? These lights, these lights I use, right, are hooked up to the Wi Fi, okay. and sometimes they go out. They don't recognize the Wi Fi, and then all of a sudden it comes back. You know, but with Bluetooth, I don't seem to ever have a problem except you can get out of out of distance from it. Like my watch here, right. this is a t uh, uh, linked up to my iPhone by Bluetooth. Right. Okay, not too fancy. So if I'm within, an, I can have the phone in the bedroom and I can still use this. You know, right. but I can right. use this anyway because it's cellular. But I have to get out of the range of the Bluetooth in order for it to become cellular. Any of that make sense? Uh, no. Mm. Well, no, I'll, it all made sense. It all made sense, but I don't have an iPhone, so stop it. I'll send you a book this thick that'll teach you all about it. Yeah, yeah. great, great. <laughs> I can hardly wait. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it'd be good bathroom material. You know, here's the trouble with technology today, I think. Uh, we got away from a basic rule. And the basic rule was you have a switch and you turn it on and the lights go on. Right. And you turn it off and the lights go off. Okay. I now that's you. the simplicity we're all looking for. Right, exactly. But none of these things in the new technology work as a simple switch on, switch off. In other no. words, there's nothing tactile about it. So for especially older people who are used to click on, click off. 
Right. It doesn't make any sense to them. You right. Know? And I don't blame them. Uh, and you're one of those people probably who grew up with a light switch. Yes, and a rotary phone. And a rotary phone. Uh, and so you're having to constantly reteach yourself stuff. And as you get older, especially when you get to my age, it's harder. Now, I know this technology, and i got to tell you, sometimes when I'm faced with a new thing that I've got to do, especially with all of this that I need right. to do to to get a, a video out and whatever, I get a little lost. Yeah. You know, I get a little yeah. hazy and, and I know this stuff. Right. But, right. But they sometimes get to a point where they figure that the people they're talking to know a certain amount. So they're right. just gonna go to that point. But you gotta go from point one. Right. Especially with older yeah. people and say, Okay. Right. I give you a good Talk to me like you're talking to a kindergartner. Yeah, exactly. Well, I uh, I have a guy that works on this network named Jack Bishop. He does the show right after me. Mm -hmm. And he, in the beginning, had the worst time, the worst time um, uh, uh, dealing with the technology, you know, because okay. you got to do certain things here to get this thing on the air, you know. He's got to right. learn how to use a thing called Skype, and then he's got to learn how to use the, Then he's got to learn how to turn the program on, which means going to the web, to the uh, to the encoder and turning it on. And he couldn't understand all this. Right. So finally- I don't understand all that. Well, finally, I had to explain it to him in radio terms he knew. Right. I said, right. the encoder, which is this little program we have here, is the right. transmitter. Okay. Okay. So you've got to turn on the transmitter, okay. and the, and the audio, the player like the i uh, iTunes, right. the player, is the programming. Okay, it's the program. Okay. So when you okay. want to do the program, you turn on the the you turn on your control board and you do your program. Okay. What if you but don't then, have an iPhone? No, but then you have to go do this by turning on the transmitter. And as soon as he understand the, stood the relationship between transmitter and control board. Right. Okay, he understood the whole thing. Oh, okay. See, and, and, and so what, what were you saying? About what? You, you were saying something about, so what, oh, what about the iPhone? Right, he I, did, what if you don't have an iPhone? He didn't have to ha use an iPhone to do this. All he had to have was a desktop computer. Oh, okay. To get on to, the, to my thing here. Right. And then to t turn the program on and make the, the encoder go. Okay. But right. he didn't understand what the encoder was. And I said, it's the right. transmitter. Forget about it. It's the yeah. transmitter. And then the light went on. Yeah. Then he understood it. Right. Yeah. Right. And, right. And right. I think what happens is with, with explaining things to an older audience, all these people have a tendency to bypass a whole bunch of information that these people need to know before they can get to point B. Right. You know, they start in the middle. It's kind of like, I do not understand football. Okay. Probably the only human being in America that doesn't understand football. I understand it. Or how, it, how it's played and how it's scored and all of that. All I do is see a bunch of little fleas running around on a field and right. then eventually there's a winner, all right? Uh, so I do not know to this day how football is played. And every time I've had somebody try to explain it to me, and I've had major football players, because I knew a lot of them in San Francisco, right. who would come by the studio, like Jerry Rice and people like that. Right. And okay. I would say, okay, explain football to me. Right. And they would always start about 10 steps ahead of where I was. Okay. And so I never understood it. Right. You know, well, you see, first you got to get a down. Well, what's a down? Nobody tells you what a down is. To me, it's on a every, fucking duck. It's on a it's fucking every duck. every 10 yards. Huh? It's every 10 yards. But I don't. You have to get it every 10 yards. Every 10 yards. Okay. Right. So that's a down. Right. Well, no, a down, there's four downs for each side. But usually, if you don't make a first down and three downs, you punt it away. See, you just lost me. You just like lost me. You just Four lost five. me completely. All right, for a touchdown, you get six points. But I don't know. What's a touchdown? 
when you cross the end zone line. Where's the end? What the end zone? What's an end zone? End zone. I knew an Italian named Enzo once. Yeah. Right. Good night. Yeah, good night, folks. You, you, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. But I because you're using you're using a whole bunch of terminology, which is not in my wheelhouse. So you've got to start me from somewhere where you're actually getting me into the into the uh, uh, the words that are being used and the it, things that are explained. So when you go go to the for, if you get to the end zone you got a touchdown. Well, I, I don't. The, some people don't understand where is the end zone. The field is a hundred yards long, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the end zone is past the hundred yards. I see. Okay. It's that little square area with the diagonal lines on it or something. Yeah. Well, it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. You're right. <laughs> Now, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's helped me is when I'm watching football and they now have those uh, those uh, graphics that they put on there to show, you know, how many right. they got to go that way in order to th that kind of helps me. OK, that's my guide. That's and I don't know why they do it for football watchers, because they know all that already. You know, yes, you know, there's new people just coming along. So do you like football? Yes. See, I hate football. I, I like sports. I, I no, I love baseball. Okay. Uh, Me too. I, and and it's not that I that I could tell you who's you know leading in the league this year or whatever. Right. Uh, I love the game and I love what it represents. It, it to me it's it's America. You know. Really. Yeah. To me, it is a day out with friends. Oh, there's nothing like going to a ballpark. And and you drink, and I don't even drink beer except when I'm at the ballpark. Really? Uh, uh, you know, have a beer, have a hot dog, talk right. to each other. Oh, wait a minute, something just happened out there. You I know? told you, the last game I went to was a minor league baseball team. Yeah. And I sat in yeah. the front row, front row, right behind home plate. You were telling me that last week. Yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. But, but I mean, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful game that has so much history to it and so right. much, so many legends associated with it and so many legendary stories about it, you know. Right. Including when they tried to fix it with the 1919 World Series, you the know. The Black Sox. The Black Sox, you know. All of that. I just find it, the minute there's a movie about baseball, I will stop and watch it. Yeah, me too. And yet too. I don't go, you know, I don't really know who's winning this year. And, and But I, I, number two, the easy, the, it's the easiest game to know how it's played. It, it's not very complicated. No, but it's, it's not. People find it boring, but it's not boring. Mm -hmm. Especially oh. when you're at the game, like you said, and you have a drink and a hot dog and you're sitting with friends and you're just yapping it up. It's very pastoral. Well, that's the term I always use, is how pastoral it is. You know, how right. it makes me, it, it just, it, it's a bunch of people out in a field. Right. Throwing a ball around. Right. Okay. And, but the other part about it, and maybe you don't know this, or maybe you do know this, it is the most geographically perfect game. If any of those bases were even more than an inch, either way, it would right. throw the whole game out of kilter. Oh, it would, it would change the whole complex of the game. Right. That they found the perfect geometric right. dynamic. Nine, 90 feet between the bases. To play this game. Right. And and uh, they developed this game that I think is one of the most perfect games ever created. And the object is to get home. Yes. Yes. That's the object. The to object get home. is to get home. Just like it is in life. Right, you know. and the, it's the only sport where the defense has the baseball. Oh yes, I mean, that was another thing. It, the defense is is has is, the ball. Has the ball. Uh, right. Every other game, the offense has the ball. That's correct. Yeah. So I mean, that's probably why I love it, uh, and I understand it, and I can go to a game and enjoy it. Right. Um, but. You know, it's not, I don't enjoy it because I enjoy the game as much as I enjoy just the whole totality of the, of the experience. 
Right, you right, know? right, right. It's nothing like when you t when you cross the, those top yeah. steps and you see the field for the first time. Yeah. Every time you see that green, green field, it's like you're seeing it for the very first time in your life. Yes. Every yeah. time. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, every seat in the house is a good seat. That's usually. Yeah. In, in Fenway, you can actually sit behind a pole. Oh, okay. But, I mean, barring that, barring right. structural problems. Right. Every seat is pretty much a good seat, even if you're far away. You can tell what's going on. Right. These days, with the new parks, there's no bad seats. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, and I just always liked it. Also, ballparks, if I remember correctly, if you just have a ballpark-only ballpark, which I love. I, I like right. it when it's just a ballpark-only ballpark, which right. they started building a lot of over the years. Right. Uh, it, it, uh, it feels cozy you yeah. know it's smaller than football right it's not as bulky as football 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 to me is loutish you know i wouldn't go to a football game i watch fo football is good to watch on tv it's mm -hmm. a tv sport yeah whereas baseball you need to be in person well the 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 reason why you know the, remember football wasn't that popular before the 50s. Right. You know why it became popular? Why it's a television-friendly sport. Right. That's what I said. Uh, baseball was a radio-friendly sport. You could describe... Right. There were guys who literally weren't in the ballpark. They got the right. line scores, and then they would sit there in a room with a guy doing the sound effects. Right. Well, and, that's, that's, that's a long time ago. What, wait a minute. I knew a guy that did it. I worked for him. His name was Gordon McClendon. He started a whole radio network based on this. This, really? is why, this is why they finally came out with that little thing at the end of the baseball game where they say any description of the uh, or right. recreation okay. of, the, of the game is expressly prohibited because he was right. doing that for years. Oh, really? He would get the line scores sitting in Dallas. And he had the Liberty Radio Network. And then he would take those line scores and he would give a description of the game that was better than anybody who was actually at the game giving the description. Right. Because he would just build it up and so on and so forth. But they would, uh, do, they would do the sound of the bats cracking and uh, all of that. That's fun. Yeah. So you, it was a, a very descriptive game. You could describe right. what was going on. Uh, and uh, it was exciting to hear. And so, therefore, right. baseball was the national sport. Come television, baseball's a little slow. Right, right. You know, they had to speed it up, too. They did a few things to speed it up. That's right. I think there's a, like, there's a shot clock in basketball. Yeah. I think there's a pitch clock now in baseball where they have to throw the pitch in so, within so many seconds. Yeah. But I mean, baseball was not a sport that played well on television. Not like football. No. Football was exciting to watch, right? You know, right? Uh, and uh, it it was uh, it, you know. So I mean, that's why I think uh, football became so big. Uh, yeah, football is huge with the bezers, with, with the, people betting. Oh betting. yeah. Oh well. All that's the other thing about sports. You know, why do we really care about sports? Why do we care whether the people cheat at sports or not? We, right. That's not because we want a better game. I mean, I've, quite frankly, if somebody cheats, it might actually make for a better game. Well, you know? I think they should let steroids be legal. Yeah, I mean, all of that. But we don't. Why? Because people gamble on it. Right. And it is made for the gamblers. Oh, yeah. It is there to protect the gamblers. Even ESPN comes up with the uh, betting line. Yeah. yeah. They didn't used to do that. But no. finally one day they said, ah, to hell with it, we'll do it. Right, 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 yeah. right. Uh, but it, 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 it's all for the benefit of the bettors. Uh, yeah. We don't want them to cheat because that will throw the line of the betting off. Right, 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 right. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not betting. Right. <laughs> you know, I just, I just want to watch a good game. Right. Like it, it, in the old days, you remember? You remember the? Um, you may not remember the quiz show scandals. Right? I, well, no, not really. Well, it was that you know they, it, it, these guys were doing TV shows, and they right. were giving away sixty-four thousand dollars or one hundred and twenty thousand dollars or whatever—a lot of money. 
Right. And they brought on these contestants. They made sure that they all were kind of characters. The little shoemaker, the, uh, uh, right. the, uh, the, uh, uh, the this or the that, you know, people who had a backstory. Right. And uh, but then they would put them in a box or whatever and ask them these questions and they would answer these amazing questions. And everybody was surprised when they found out that these shows were fixed. Yes. And the reason they were fixed, it wasn't like the people doing the shows were crooked, okay? They, they were, just wanted to make good television. They wanted to make a good show. Right. And they did. I mean, it was exciting. Right. And, you know, if they had some guy who wasn't, uh, the, the, we had this one thing with Charles Van Doren, and then the guy who was going up against him, I'm trying to remember his name now, didn't have quite the personality Van Doren right. did. So they made sure Van Doren got the answers and the other guy right. didn't. All right. Right, 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 right. And when they finally, this all came out, and oh, it's such a scandal, and blah, 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 blah. I'm going, I didn't get hurt. Right. I got a good show. Right, right, right. You know. Well, they even made the movie quiz show. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about, is that Van right. Doren situation. Right. But, I mean, I didn't get cheated. I, I got the benefit of this fix. I mean, I watched an exciting show that was choreographed, and the, right. and the people who were doing it didn't see anything wrong with that because there had been nothing wrong with it before then. Right. You know, it, what, what, what they really felt they had to do was turn out the best possible show. Right, 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 right. So, That's yeah. like these reality shows. They have scripts. Oh, they, if they don't have scripts, they know which way it's going to go. And right. if they don't know exactly which way it's going to go, the people who are on the reality shows know they're on a reality show. That's right. That's like the one where they're out in the woods alone. Well, yeah. there's a camera crew with them. Oh, yeah. So they're not alone. Well, the, well, I often used to say on the show Survivor, they go, oh, well, these people live through this. Oh, the snakes. And I'm going, of course they're going to because there's a goddamn camera person there right. who, if they really right. get in trouble, is going to save their life. Right. Or oh, And there's a medical staff on, on, on call. And it's bad TV to have somebody die. You know what I always hate is when they do documentaries like about mountain climbing. Right. And they show these people climbing the mountain and how difficult it is and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, is anybody asking how tough the cameraman is? Right, right, <laughs> right, right, no kidding, right? I mean, the, the, these people are climbing up the side of sheer cliffs, right? Right. And then there's a cameraman shooting it. And you're going, right. that guy's better than the person who's climbing because he's doing the same thing, but he's got a camera and he's shooting the thing on top of it. Right, right. Oh, like skydiving. Oh. Like skydiving. Maybe he has ropes that are pulling him or something, but he's doing something. Skydiving. Good example. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, are you going to skydive with a camera? Hmm? No. Are you going to skydive oh, with well, a camera? Oh, I would. I would. I'd put it on my helmet. Right. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I don't think I would skydive. You know something? I it's the one thing I've told people. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, a, I'm basically I'm a uh, veteran coward. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and and, and I, I don't like to do things that are dangerous. That's why I've right. lived to be. That's why I've lived to be eighty-one. I I, right. I I don't do things that are dangerous. But somebody said, "Would you jump out of it?" I wouldn't do that when they see somebody jumping out of a plane. I go, I would. I actually would. If somebody buddy jumped with me, held on to me while I was doing it, I'd do it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I have a fear of heights, by the way. But you don't have a fear of heights in that situation because you get your fear of heights because, like, you look over the edge of a building and you can see right. the side of the building. Right. But if the side of the building disappears, you won't be afraid of the height because you have no relationship to the ground. Or so you think. Well, so I hope I've just never jumped out of a plane, you know. Well, I, if you're jumping out of a plane, I'll be watching from the ground. Hey, hey, hey Alex. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll crash. I'll meet you on the ground, yeah. Right. But anyway, so I never minded uh, uh, them, uh, you know, fixing the shows because it didn't affect me. I wasn't out to win a million dollars. That's right. You know. And they put on a good show, and I got uh, you know, I got the entertainment benefit out of it. There you go. Well, I just looked at the clock, and we got about a minute left to go. Do you have anything of great import that you want to say to the 
listening public here. No, because I'm on my way to get my phone fixed, so I'm kind of cranky. You know, that's an exciting day for you, isn't it? Yeah, really. I, I, could, I could do without it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wish the phone showed up ready to go. Uh, uh, phones, well, that's another thing altogether. I don't know how some right. people even, neg uh, older people negotiate iPhones. Right. I still have to always fix my wife's uh, a watch, you know, Apple Watch and stuff. Really? Because she can't figure out what to do. She's, you know. And she's right. not stupid to this stuff. Right. Anyway, uh, see you next week. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, no, we'll talk about that after I'm through ending this. We'll okay. set the day. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's uh, Steve Kravitz. He's not playing anywhere, but uh, who knows? Soon, maybe he'll be in a movie or something. You know, we don't who know. Knows? Yeah, I, we're hoping. Okay. Yes, me too. Stephen Pearl, folks. Bye. Bye. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, by the way, at the very end there, I had my senior moment, folks. I called him Steve Pearl because, you know, we do Pearl as well. So uh, I, you know, okay. But, uh, you know, I was saying today on a, uh, another little thing that I did out in the park that I had a senior moment and I don't excuse having a senior moment because I am a senior all right I'm 81 years old I mean I mean uh, allowed to make those kind of mistakes the kind of mistakes I wasn't allowed to make when I was younger okay all right all right okay let me see here nobody's calling me okay nobody is calling us hmm okay well I guess I could just uh, this is amazing uh, am I, am I, are you able to get in touch with me? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I, I, this is amazing. Really? Um, hmm. Let me see here. Let me, uh, let me just make sure that I have all these, uh, these things all right, you know. Um, let me see here. I just want to see what is my, uh. What is my, is my number right? Yeah, the number's right and everything. And nobody's calling me. Well, have we finally reached that, okay, where nobody's going to call me any longer. All right, well, uh, I'll give it a couple minutes here and then I'm out of here, okay? Uh, you know, no Charlie tonight, of course. Uh, no, uh, probably no Alan. He's taking the night off. Well, here comes Jeff Stein, folks. Uh, let me see here. So I know we are okay that we uh, do have things. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we got at least two people here. So let me, let me go to the panel. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, all righty. There they go. Hello, guys. How are you this evening? Where are you? Oh, where, where are you, uh, Brian? <laughs> And, and, I'm scrambling for my laptop so you don't close the show. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, really? Okay, no, I, I wasn't planning on closing the show. I mean, Yeah, you did. You threatened. You said, I don't well, have I mean, if, if nobody's it. there, why should I do it? You know? Okay. Okay, but you're, 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 you're nothing but you look like you're in the witness protection program there. <laughs> oh, uh, it, 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 uh, you guys were talking baseball earlier. Oh, there we go. There you see. See, you, you got to hit the go for the light. Yeah, what? You guys are talking baseball earlier. Mm -hmm. If you go to Alexa and ask who has the best record in baseball. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Echo, who has the best record in baseball? I know about one professional baseball team with the highest winning percentage. The no. San Francisco Giants. This, well, it says the San Francisco Giants has the highest winning. That is correct. Oh, we that is that what you were? Is that what you wanted? I thought you wanted yeah. to know. You know who was yes. the who was the best best player best best no, player. No, we're, we're the Giants are in first place. They have the best, the best uh, record, record in baseball, baseball right now. Really, the highest yep. number of wins would that would that be? Yep. And yep. yet, and, yep. yet they have seventy two. Yeah, seventy two wins, and they're going to get another one tonight. So, but they haven't played in the World Series that often. I mean, oh that, yeah, they did. Oh, really? 2010, 2012, 2014. Oh okay, yep. all right. Fine. 
Is that from the beginning, the, all the history of baseball? Oh, no, 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 no. They won some way, way, way before. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying though, when, when I asked for that statistic, is that the most winningest of That's all This season. Teams? Oh, this season. This uh, season, yeah. Oh. But they're, they're uh, what, like uh, two thirds? Hmm? Two thirds into the season. Okay. But how about yeah. all time, I wonder? Oh, I don't Yankees. know. Yank- Shut up. I know people. Well, Yankees, 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 yeah, Yankees. Yankees, Yankees won like 27. That, Yankees. 27 Yankees. World Series or something, right? Yes. 27, 28, something like that. You can 27. Yankees, my crankies. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I, uh, uh, I, I, guess, I don't know who, who you know, I, I talked about how I love baseball, but I don't think I ever had a favorite baseball team. You know? Uh, yeah, no, I mean... Uh, well, you lived in San Francisco. Well, I lived in San Francisco, but you got to realize, when I was growing up, when I was a, a baby, when I was a kid, we only had, we didn't have any Major League Baseball teams in San Francisco. Right. We had all the, uh, all those, those half-assed, uh, um, you know, what do they call them? Farm teams. Semi-pro teams. Semi-pro the Oakland teams. Oaks. Yeah, Oakland Oaks, Oaks and the San Francisco, San Francisco Seals. San Francisco Seals used Oakland to play Oakland. where? Where did they play? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 16th um, and Petrero. Keysar mm-hmm. Stadium. No, Keysar Stadium. No, 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 no. That was football. They, was yeah, it? the 49ers played at Keysar. Oh, okay. The Giants played at 16th and Petrero. It was called Seal Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Now the yeah. 49ers, now there. 49ers as a football team were not a major football team at that time. They became a major football team. Hmm. Am I right or wrong? Who's William A. Ferguson? I wonder who this is. I wonder if we're going to have to get rid of William A. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Hello, William A. Ferguson. How are you? Um, How do you connect him? Bill? A William? Yeah. Do you like William or Bill? Oh, either or. Have you called us before? I have. You have. When? Oh, this was some years ago. Oh, okay. So that's probably why I don't remember you. Yeah. Hell, I, I don't have... remember my wife, and I just left her in the bedroom a couple of hours ago. <laughs> you know. What's happened since the last time I talked to you? So, <laughs> a, a, a lot's happened. I mean, like, what has a lot happened? Do you mean? Well, uh, recently I came down with COVID. I was laid up for three months. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wow. That was good. Nice. great. Yeah. Go ahead, let me get my mask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mask up, everybody. Yeah, you, three months you were down with it? Three months. See, everybody goes, oh, well, it's just like a bad, just a bad flu. No. No. No, it's worse than that. Did Was this before we had vaccines? Yeah, this is before we had vaccines. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, how, whenever any time a, a new virus comes out, I'm typically the first one it finds. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. All right. Well, it's nice that you did it for the rest of us. Yes, yeah. I took one for the team. Yeah, I took one I, for the team. What, my company uh, can use you. Yeah, he uh, he makes <laughs> testing kits. Oh, cool. He uh, uh, Brian oh, work, has, works for yeah. a company that makes testing kits. Uh, and uh, I'm surprised he doesn't run the whole damn place by now. But you know, he's probably getting there. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting too old now. You're getting too old? No. Yeah. Really? Did a lot of work. Yeah. <clears throat> they go. The company's so so big now. So, but yeah, I was doing a lot there. So. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so uh, how did you get it? I mean, we know how you get it, but how did you get it? What circumstances do you think caused you to get it? Well, I was exposed to somebody at work who had it. Yeah, and were you, were you wearing masks at work? No. No, this is this is before we started doing the mask mandates. So this was you got it really early on. And what ended up happening was, I got I I got something that I felt was like a flu or a cold or something, but then mm-hmm. it just got progressively worse, and I ended up going to the hospital, and I ended up on a ventilator. Mm. Wow. For 21 days. Oh. Son of a bitch. Yeah. That's serious because they usually say that only 80, uh, 20% of the people who go on ventilators ever come out of them. I almost didn't. You almost did. Where, where do you live? Where do you I live? live in, I live in California. Where? I live, uh, near Sacramento. I live in Sutter County. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Wow. So, so, so how, how were the hospitals when you were there? 
Uh, at the at this point, they weren't. As of December eight, we don't have any ICU beds here anymore. Mm. They're they're tapped out. Wow. But at the time, yeah, they got me in. They tested me. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, you have COVID. And then I just declined from that point forward. Mm. You you didn't have the benefit, I would imagine, at that time of some of the newer medicines and so on that they've been using. No, this was this was pull and pray. Oh wow, this mm. is, yeah. So that was how long ago? That had to be at least that was a year, almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. You um, came out of it a year ago, or you went into it a year ago? I went into it a year ago. I was and um, about five days into it, that's when they they, they intubated me on it on a ventilator, and. Mm. Um, I didn't come out of it for 21 days, and then after that, I was laid up for about another two and a half months. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I ask you something? Sure. It, it, don't answer it if I'm getting too personal. How much did the hospital bill come to? Oh, Jesus. Um, I mean, this isn't what you paid because you obviously, I'm sure you had insurance. Sure, I had insurance. But, but, what, but you had to get a bill. And, yeah, and the bill much? was something like over over three hundred thousand dollars oh only that for three only months that. wow i thought yeah, it'd I, be yeah, closer. i got lucky yeah i thought it'd be closer to a million <laughs> but whatever yeah whatever yeah We're alive, you, you say that same hospital now there aren't any uh, beds available no the, yeah the, the hospital i went to there's no beds available anymore what well, because mm -hmm. it's it's gone back up again Right, as of December eighth, they, they're tapped out on ICU beds. They're literally putting people. In, it, it's like Italy, <clears throat> yeah. Like it, like but, Italy but, was. But I thought I thought California was had kind of managed that problem of two not enough beds available and things like that. But then again, you're up in Sutter. You say Sutter County, yeah. So, so uh, you know that's they probably don't have that large a hospital. No, it's the only it's the only one only hospital within like say a fifty mile radius, mm -hmm. and then there's Chico. They got Anlo Hospital, but yeah, yeah, those are the only there's the only two hospitals they're going to send you to if there's something seriously wrong with you. Wow, wow. So well, <clears throat> a survivor. This is terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Also, end up losing a few teeth in the process. What do you mean, just? Because they fell out, yeah. Because uh, because of COVID. Now I don't know if this, this is actually because, due to COVID, but if it isn't, it's a hell of a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you didn't have anything that wrong with your teeth before you got COVID, did you? No. You you brushed and flossed and saw your dentist twice a year and blah 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 blah. Right. And then you lost your teeth when you got COVID. Mm -hmm. It's hmm. amazing. Now, what about what about the aftermath now? Well, the aftermath is for a while, I think about eight months or so, and I'm still going through this now. I uh, kind of got COVID brain. Oh, you got kind of like a fog? Yeah. It it was really, I was reading it. Yeah, it was really bad in the beginning. I, I couldn't put a sentence together. I, I was out of work for a while, and my poor wife is just... I, I don't know how she managed, but that was, it was pretty bad. Well, you were out of work because you were sick, but when you got yeah. well, did they hire you back? Sure, yeah, yeah. I was, oh. they, they put me on an extended vacation. They were like, yeah, okay, you got COVID. They took care of me. Oh, good, good, good. I'm back at work now. Yeah, but do you still have COVID brain? I mean, do you still have Sort that, of. Yeah, sort of, that fog. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I forget who I am. Oh, wow. oh really? Mm. Well, it's sort of. I, I mean, that's kind of exaggerating for a dramatic effect. I, here, don't, but, I yeah. don't think we've begun to know the, the total devastation of this particular <clears throat> disease. You know? I mean, we talk to somebody like you and you go, hey, look, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I have uh, uh, all these problems after the fact. And we don't know how this is going to affect people in the long term. No, we yeah, don't. You know, uh, hmm. but did you get finally when it was time to get the uh, the vaccine? Did you get it? I actually got it today. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, I went I went into Walmart and got got a shot today, and and I got the Moderna shot. Yeah. And I have to report that everything is fine, and I'm chimpy from but but did that. Yeah, and and uh, but now you're full of uh, uh, silicone chips in you that will track you everywhere you go. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's kind of interesting. Why did you wait that long to get it? Because you were kind of, you had had it. And I had it and I was coping with the COVID brain and coping with, you know, barely able to string a sentence together in the first couple of months after, after I recovered. Mm -hmm. it, it, it took a long time for me to get it. Almost up to this point, it took me a while to get back to almost good. Did you have a certain, um, did you have, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it, uh, uh, Brian? Sure. Uh, uh, were you kind of immune in ways? I mean, uh, did you have a, a certain amount of resistance now to the disease because you had it? Uh, antibodies. Do you have antibodies? What did they <laughs> say? Yeah, yeah, of course. Once you, once you have it, and you survive it you, yes you're gonna you're gonna have antibodies um i don't know how long they lasted the other problem with it is people say well i've got antibodies because i had covid and yes right. you had antibodies but not against the variant right that's why that's primarily why i went in today to get the co yeah. get my vaccine because of the delta variant yeah yeah mm -hmm. so uh, now did your wife get it no, she didn't get it. Wow, <laughs> Alex, what? your your thing is. I told you you better keep kissing Marjorie. She's the only one getting tested in your house. You better keep kissing. Well, her. I mean, she got. She hasn't get. We, she hasn't been tested lately. Uh -huh. uh, the last one, we both got tested about a month or two ago when we walked by a place and they said we'll give you fifty dollars if you let us do oh a, a nasal <laughs> test on you and i said for 50 bucks you can stick it up my ass you know i, mean, I, don't, I don't care you know so we did it you know and uh uh but uh no, I, you know, we've had, of course, the, the vaccine. But, boy, that's quite a story. You're yeah. very lucky. You're very, very I'm sure you know how lucky you are. And Well, yeah, I thank you. I, yes, I am. I think it was, it was really close. close yeah, to I, think it's smart, I think it's really smart getting the vac vaccine even after because I think everybody's treating the variant like it's, you know, the regular COVID, and it's definitely not. No, it's not. And and uh, people who have had had it and gotten the uh, the antibodies. Thank you. I forgot the term mainly because I think I've had COVID and don't know it, and I have COVID brain fog. Either COVID. that, or it's called eighty-one year old brain. Hmm. Uh, but but no, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, uh, it, 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 it it the people hmm. are starting to get it who already have had it because of the variant and uh, so everybody should just make sure they they get vaccinated no matter what you know but uh, uh, I, 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 your wife must have been panicked throughout this whole thing she I, thought I was gonna die she was already updating my will really yeah I mean, that's that's how close it came I mean, they were just they were like okay we're gonna Put him on this ventilator, but if he doesn't recover in a certain amount of time, we're going to pull the plug. <clears throat> mm -hmm. How many days did they give you to recover? Twenty, uh, twenty-one, exactly twenty-one days. And so, how did they know that they didn't have to pull the plug, or did they just pull out the respirator? I, 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 on day twenty, I can't. I I started to improve. Uh huh. I, I guess I started to you know, come back and then by day 21, they were ready to, okay, we can take him off the ventilator now. Now, for those, for those of you guys, the rest of you, this is not something they just do normally. In order to put you on a ventilator, the first thing they have to do is they have to put you in a coma to do it. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna stick this tube down your lungs while you're awake. Oh, they knock you out then. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to put you out. So they put you into a drug-induced coma. Yeah. Pretty much, yes. Uh, and, uh, 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 you, and, you know, you, you don't know whether you're coming out of that or not. 
You know, no. mm -hmm. once you go in, it's I. It, You're committed. There's, there's a gap. I have this like black hole in my in my brain. This gap in my in my sense of time. I'm I'm yeah. actually missing time. Yeah, well, I I once described one drug that they gave me to put me under. It's like it was only I was only under for twenty five minutes, but I said it's like somebody edited twenty five minutes out of my life. Exactly. You know, I'm here and then I'm here. Okay. But what happened in between? Well, that's probably when they uh, you know they they stick the swab up my ass. But you know, whatever goes on during that twenty five minutes, I don't remember it. Because uh, I remember a Tuesday, and then I remember a Sunday, twenty-one days later. Okay, so you don't you don't have any any inkling of what went on. You have no uh, uh, memory of that twenty-one day. The period. last the last thing I remember was the the anesthesiologist was okay. We're gonna pump you full of this. I'm like, all right, cool. Okay. And now we're going to give you this, and mm -hmm. and the last thing I remember was there was this really bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a chemical. It tasted like chemicals, and that's the last thing I remember. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and then when I woke up, it was they told me, "Oh, you've been out for twenty one days." Oh, and how did you what what how did you feel about that? Well, you were glad you came out of it, I imagine. Yeah, I, I didn't die, you know. That's because guys, that's how guys like me define healthy, you know. I, I didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna the bar somewhere, you know. Yeah, uh -huh. I was like, I was okay, you know. I didn't really know how to process that. I, I kind of still don't know how to process that I had been gone mm. for 21 days. That's yeah. Good. Wow. Let me get this real quick. Yeah. Did you lose a lot of weight? Yeah, I lost over a hundred pounds. Oh wow! I want to go in a coma for. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> last time, in fact, Alex, the last time I talked to you, I weighed about two hundred and sixty-five pounds. I was well on my way to three hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it, my my face like took up most of the camera. Okay. And, uh, I'll tell you about that time when I probably talked to you last time. I was about 260, and then I lost uh, 60 pounds. Uh, no, it was 245. I lost 60 pounds. I think I put about 20, 25 of it back on because of uh, a prostate operation. I had a cancer operation. I had well, radiation. It was radiation. By the so. way, you positively glow, sir. What? Yes, I positively glow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, an amazing story, William. But we're glad you made it through, and that you're calling mm -hmm. us to tell us about it. You know. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I, it's good to be back. It yeah. really is. Yeah, yeah. Anybody have any questions they want to ask him at all? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, did you uh, did you actually go back to work or something like that since? Not for a, not for a long, long time. And then, and then what was that like? Oh, it was a little bizarre. It's like you know, it's kind of like. Pick it up where you left off. Yeah. What kind of but, work do you do? Well, I work uh, corporate security at the Gap. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I work at a data center in Rockland. Oh, I see. Okay. So, I uh, just my, my whole my whole bag is just sit there and watch cameras and. Yeah. And yeah. Did they keep paying you during this period of time? Yes, they did. Very good. Ooh, Very nice. Good. Okay. Nice words go to the Gap. Yeah. Well, it was. I don't actually work for the Gap proper. I work for another through a security company like that, that contracts yeah. with the Gap, but the security company, which I'm sorry I can't name. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that they, would be insecure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they actually they were actually paying me through the whole. Wow, that's terrific. Huh? That's terrific. Yeah. <clears throat> They're like when I first talked to them, and they were like, "I told them, look, I I got COVID, you know, and I, I'm calling from the hospital bed." Yeah. I was like, "Look, I I I've got this disease. I'm sorry, but you know, I don't think I'm gonna be." They're like, "Hey, don't worry about it. We'll take care of everything. You know, 
for however long you, you need, you just get well. And when you come back, your job will still be here. Oof, nice people. Oh. Yeah, they were very nice people. That's terrific. That's terrific. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, security is not the most glamorous job in the world. No. By far, but these people have, you know, I've, they've always given me work when I've needed it. Mm -hmm. and they've always paid me on time. And I, I really can't say anything bad about them. Right. I mean, but like most security, you know, every security company is shady and fly by night. This company is just shady and fly by night enough. So I'm, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Why, you know? why do you say security companies are shady and fly by night? Well, they cut all kinds of corners. Oh, really? uh, they promised that they promised the clients the moon. Mm -hmm. But, but when it comes time to, when it comes time to actually do the job, you know, six months into it, the client is complaining. Oh, you guys aren't doing what you said you were going to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to cancel this contract. Is this true of all security companies? Pretty much. Yeah. Really? Large yeah. and small. They, they, In other they, words, they, they'll promise anything it takes to get the, the account. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Well, thank God I don't have to hire an, a security company. That's not um, in my playbook. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I was going to they, they actually <clears throat> they they talk about yeah putting the putting the patients into the to the coma like you're talking about, mm -hmm. and yeah they say it takes a few days for all the chemicals to get out of their body after they start getting consciousness again, and and they've had problems with some people not coming out of the coma too. That's wow. true. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, there I didn't. That, I, I never. I never heard about that going in there. There is that. Yeah, there is that chance that it, once they once you go under, you're not coming back out. Yeah. Well, no problem for me because I've been in a coma since 2005. So. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. You know. Uh, 1996 here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, you know, I mean, this is just it's a strange, strange thing. You know, this whole this whole deal with with uh, covid and it's terrible the way it's affected it, uh, it, just everybody uh and here's somebody who's a pioneer you got it early on when we didn't even know exactly what it was and how, how devastating it was going to turn out to be it, yeah. it it i got it okay uh, sometime around march i think it was like 18th after the bay area shut down mm -hmm. Um, here in Yuba City, we have a we have a director of health and human services. Her name is uh, Dr. Fong Lu. Mm -hmm. and she's and she's a great lady, mm -hmm. and she was monitoring the cases out of Sacramento. And one in one day, it went from like thirty five cases to over three hundred in in less than twenty four hours. And she said, "Oh no, fuck this! We're we're locking down right yeah. now." Yeah. Yeah. That's about the time, and that's and about a couple of days after that. That's about the time <clears throat> got it. So you got it before everybody was sitting around saying, "Hey, well, you better wear masks, and we better mm. work from home, and blah 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 blah, and all that kind of stuff." Well, yeah, I got it just after we locked down. Yeah, yeah. We just got, we just had testing around that time, so yeah. yeah. It's yeah. amazing, you know. It, it, it's amazing to see how far we've come in a year both in uh, uh, putting a damper on this particular thing and at the same time on in <clears throat> the stupidity of some people about it. You know. Do you see Tennessee? No, what's the latest in Tennessee? Tennessee? No. Tennessee, they, they had the student board, they, they had some meetings and they had some doctors talk and all the other parents are yelling at them and saying, no oh, yeah. more masks, no more masks. And the lady, the, the, the ladies there that the, the the parents, I guess, they had they had signs saying, "Our kids have gone through enough. Get the mask off." And it's like, "Oh my God!" Well, your kids wearing are, a mask that's like devastating for them. Your kids are and gonna, went and yeah. one guy who spoke, they followed him out to his car. Security had to follow him out. The police followed him out to his car because there must have been a hundred people yelling at him. A couple of people getting really into him, saying, "We know who you are. We know who you are." And it was on CNN tonight, and it's like crazy stuff I mean, you know the the notion that kids can't get it is now been proven to be a complete fallacy 
Oh hell, that, there was a kid in the in the in the bed next to me. Really? In, yeah. How old was he? Fourteen. Fourteen. And yeah. but they're talking about children can't get it, and it turns out now the children are coming down with it. That's such bullshit. <laughs> you know? That is total bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But the kids are coming down with it, and and uh, uh, it's just it's just there there's there's a stupidity going on here. I mean, like that meeting you were talking about. Oh, our kids are we, they're tired of wearing these masks. Blah 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 blah. Look at what you're doing okay. to them with these masks. Hey, listen, the masks suck. Okay, I wish we had better technology than that, but we don't. Okay, but the masks suck. But they're the only thing we've got you know, for people who are not vaccinated to protect themselves against this. And that's not even 100% protection, you know? So I, I laugh when they say, oh, it causes psychological damage to these kids. Yeah, right. Come on. Yeah, they, said that they, they said that the, they blamed the, the kids were getting rashes on their face and all this stuff. And the doctor says, I haven't seen one person come in for rashes on their face because of that. Kids we are fucking vaccinated to work. I, I I wear masks all the time at work. Everybody at my job wears a mask. We don't. No, come on. Well, kids you know what you do get. Stuff. You can get some some indentations from the straps. Sure. But that's not a rash. Yeah. You know. Stephanie. Stephanie. She had a tan mark because they have to oh. run outside. <laughs> so she had a tan mark. It was all white in here. Well, you know, you know what what what's happened. Uh, I understand, and maybe you can tell us with Adrian. Uh, the kids actually adapt very well to the mask. Oh yeah, that they actually yeah. find them fun in a way. Adrian was getting the other kids in trouble because she kept telling them to put their mask up. So yeah, yeah. and they were even talking about CNN. You know, they said, "Geez, make it fun for the kids. You know, have them design their own masks and color, and have like the best mask or most colorful mask contests and all this stuff." You know, there are so many things you can do, and the kids. Adrian doesn't mind wearing a mask. She's the one always wearing a mask knowing that she's not vaccinated like today when we're going out and stuff she's really good at it well i'm, I'm wondering why uh why we haven't with all the technology we have come out with better masks you know i mean the masks we have seem to be kind of uh you know the 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 the, the, the surgical masks they've been around hell you look at pictures of people during uh uh, the uh, uh, the Spanish flu, and they're wearing the same masks we're wearing today. You know, yeah, wearing them below the nose line. No, they were up. Uh, they were up here. Mm. Yeah. They were Initially, they were wearing them below the nose line, and everybody was still getting sick. And like, oh no, you need to cover your whole face. Right. Right. I just got through reading a book um, about two months ago called The Great Influenza by Scott Berry. Yeah. And I, I mean, I knew the 1918 pandemic was bad. Oh, it was very bad. I had no idea how bad it really was. The low estimate is 50 million dead. Jeez. That's the low estimate. The high estimate <clears throat> is somewhere like around 200 million dead. But they don't know because it was, in those days, we didn't have the kind of communication we have now. And here's something else that happened. Funeral homes were putting armed guards on their on their funeral homes because people were stealing coffins wow and the other thing that was going on was that back then they used to send nurses to your home mm -hmm. you're sick they would send a nurse to your home but what would usually end up happening was these nurses would show up to these homes and it would end up being a hostage situation they're like, oh no, you're gonna help my you you're gonna help my son or my daughter or my mother or my sister or whatever. And they would these hold these poor nurses at gunpoint. Wow. And that's partly why they don't do house calls anymore. Wow. It's, you know, I mean, uh I had heard I'd heard though, and I don't know if this is true, that when it finally ended, the Spanish flu, it mm -hmm. was like Saturday you had the Spanish flu and Monday it was all over. It was like yeah. that. It was like turning off a light switch. Is that what you read? Yeah, something like that. Because they uh, were all dead. Well, is it that they were all dead, or I don't well, know? There was, there was there was this one part I read where this kid, well, he was he was a kid then, but he would like go over to this 
friend's house and they were like, oh no, he's gone. Yeah. But okay. you know, you know what, what, what happens today, if we, if the Spanish flu happened today, if it came, came by to, tomorrow, all of a sudden, here's the Spanish flu, whatever the strain was, mm -hmm. it wouldn't even be a problem. I think we would be able to take care of it with current medicine that we have and just annihilate it. Be, but so when you talk about this particular pandemic, think of how horrible this is because we didn't have the ability to simply wipe it out. I think we could have wiped out the Spanish flu had we had all the antibiotics that we have now. And the mask and, mandates. And, and, and the mask mandates and things that we knew back uh, today that we didn't that's know back then. That's primarily why we don't we don't have flu this year. Well, we, yeah, year, everybody, right. Everyone's asking, well, what happened to the flu? How come, how come there's no flu? You don't hear about flu anymore. That's because we're fucking masked up. You know something? Other countries mask up every flu season. The Korea. Chinese, the Chinese, oh. the Japanese. Um, uh, 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 you look at the shots of, of Beijing, and there are people walking around with masks. Because every they, time they, went, yeah. Every time I went to Korea on a military exercise, because I was in the Navy for a while. Mm -hmm. I think you were too. I Alex. was too, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That guy should Screw say, the Marines, huh? Yeah? That guy should kill me. So anyway, I, and, and by the way, I'm thankful for whatever synaptic event allowed me to remember that you were in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, every time I went to Korea in March, which is about when their flu season started, mm -hmm. everybody was masked up. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we, we have had a very... I, I, you know, I got my flu shots, so I don't know that I didn't get it because I got the flu shots, but we, we I have no real idea about that. But the fact is they say there was basically no flu season this year because everybody was wearing masks. You know, and we if should, we did that we every year. We should do year, more of that. We really should do more of that. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Kevin. How are you? All right. How you doing, Alex? Yeah, you've been listening to William here. He's been, he's been very fast. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's nice that he made it through all this crap. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I like your setup, by the way. Oh, thank you. It's just my office. <laughs> yeah. You like mine here? I have this big window that looks out on New York City, and the <laughs> weather never changes. It's hard. How about this one? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that is that a green screen, too? No, I don't have a green screen. I just put a, a picture logo on Zoom. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause I and forget you. Can, from what I can tell is, yeah, you. Can, I also just got, I also just got a Mac because I I I just uh, enrolled in school not too long ago. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sent me uh, an iPad and a Mac, and a MacBook. Oh really? Yeah, it's only costing me fifty three thousand dollars, but you know, fifty three thousand dollars. That's right. For for what the uh, going back to school, the, the tuition is fifty three grand. Oh, I see. Okay, but yeah, and I'm loving my Mac. I used to be a PC guy for years, and now I got this Mac. And I'm like, I don't even bother with my PC anymore. So what what do you what you enrolled in college courses basically? Uh, yeah, I'm learning how to be a web designer. Oh, okay. At for yeah. fifty three thousand dollars. Fifty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm going for a bachelor's degree. Oh, I see. But where are you doing it? Full Sail University in Florida. And what do you do um, this by? I guess you do this by. Uh, uh, yeah, online. Online. Yeah. Yeah, I'm online. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm not in Florida. Yeah. I would never move to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about Florida, man. <laughs> well, let me let me just for a moment here change the subject here. Uh, uh, it, it, what is happening out there in the news that I should know? And I'm saying this. I'm going to tell you why I say this. Because I have once again taken myself out of the loop when it comes to watching news. I am so disappointed after this whole Cuomo thing with the way the MSNBCs and the CNNs of the world comported themselves. And I never could stand Fox or uh, some of the Newsmax or uh, One America News. Uh, 
But I just, I just decided, I was so pissed off, I just said, I'm not going to watch the news anymore. I have no idea what's going on. I hear we did pass some kind of bill where it looks like we're going to get some uh, infrastructure money. We did. Yeah, but. But. It hasn't but what? Yet. Inform me, because I, as I say, I have just so stopped watching the news because it so pisses me off. You the know? Senate passed it. Those two bills aren't going to be ready to be signed until the fall. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Democrats are going to hold it, hold something over their heads, and that yeah. second half of it. And the the Republicans are going to try to uh, try to throw the debt ceiling into a default or something like that. You know, so no, the the, the uh, Republicans are going to say we're not going to we're going to not going to allow the uh, Democrats to raise the debt ceiling. So that means that if they don't, we'll basically the we'll basically default on our you know obligations, treasury bill obligations. You know what I don't understand? When when are these guys in Washington just going to say, you know, we're doing we're, we're working for the people. Let's do something for them. Oh no no you, no! You know, no, there's no. just no sense of that. Oh no 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 no! It's never been like that. It's never been. I don't know. I, let me put it this way. When I was a young boy, they seemed okay. to get some stuff done for the people. You know? Some. Well, I mean, look at it. Uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, got a civil rights bill, and he got, I think, Medicare great, pa through. and things society. like The great, well, that, that was his overall theme of it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't you think know. there's been an effective president, uh, Congress president since Roosevelt. Well, I think uh, I think Lyndon Johnson was pretty effective. I mean, he passed more civil rights legislation than any president in history, and then okay. he also got us Medicare, and there were a yeah. few other things he did while he was in office that were benefiting people. Certain Southern Rights Acts and things like that. So, it, it, which no one expected to come out of Lyndon Johnson, who basically was a Southerner. Yeah, um, I also like Nixon for giving us the EPA. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even even he stopped watches right twice a day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I was reading this book about the history of the filibuster and um in the 50s um the Democrats and the Republicans were fighting over the filibuster too, but back in those days uh Nixon Nixon and uh Eisenhower were the, mm -hmm. on the side of getting rid of the the uh filibuster and the republic i mean the democrats from the south the dixiecrats were the ones that were uh you know keeping you know were fighting to keep the filibuster there so they could you know foil yeah. all the civil rights bills yeah right but, right but nixon you know i never knew nixon was a liberal that's why uh compared know, to Jackson today's Washington, republicans nixon was a liberal yeah he was a liberal he also took us off the gold standard yeah 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 so I mean, and um, uh, and Nixon uh, uh, was the one that opened up China. Yeah. By going there and only and, Nixon can go to China. Huh? What was this? Only Nixon can go to China. Yeah. None of us were allowed to go. Back in the day. Mm -mm. Uh, um, and of course, we got the same problem today with Cuba. We still we can't go to Cuba. You know, there was a time when we could for a short time that we could go to. Oh, Cuba. Oh my! My great grandfather. Yeah. He like he loved his cigars. And specifically he yeah. loved his Havanas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then when I guess when Eisenhower put the kibosh on that, oh, he was all about fuck Eisenhower. I had somebody I was talking to a couple many years ago. And um he was talking about a friend. Or he was, he, no, he said he actually went to London. And he said, mm -hmm. I'm in London. I can buy Cuban cigars. That's right, you can. So he went into a cigar store and he said, okay, uh, 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 I'm from America, I would like a Cuban cigar. And first the, mistake. Huh? First mistake saying I'm from America, I want a Cuban yeah, cigar. But he said, I want a, I want a Cuban cigar. And uh, uh, the guy says, uh, fine, uh, we have some really good ones over here. And he goes over and gets them, and he says, uh, here, have one. I'd take one. He took one out, and he said, I think I'll take this one. And he said, let me do it. Let me enjoy one with you, okay? 
and he pulled out one for himself, and then they cut, I guess, the front of it. I don't know. I'm not a cigar smoker, so I don't He's know. A cho- he, yeah, he chops. Yeah, and then you, you know, and then the two he, ways to do this: you either chop or you punch. Yeah, he light. He has the. He has. They, he has them light up, and he he lights up, and then the uh, other guy, the British guy, lights up, and then he takes a puff off of it, and he savors it for a moment, and then he looks at the American and says. Your American president is so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I will drink to that. Yeah. He says, Look at what you're missing. Isn't this terrible? You're missing it. Uh, I will so drink to that. You know, I mean, they, they, but the uh, Cuban cigars were the gold standard, weren't they? Are they still the gold standard? Yeah, they still yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, it certainly wasn't Muriel. You know, uh, or, or what were some white, white hands? You remember white hands? Yeah. Oh, what were they? Or little tiny owls. like cigarette white owls, owls and white owls. Oh yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I never could stand cigars, uh, but then again, bags. I, remember, I couldn't you stand. Used to do the the uh, prank calls and go, hey, do you have Prince Henry in the can? No, yeah. Prince Albert, Prince Albert in the can. Prince, Prince Albert, Albert yeah. yeah. Well, that was a tobacco company, and they had tobacco it, in the can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Prince Albert in the can, yeah. Oh, yeah. White so, Owls. Pipe, Rocco, pipe tobacco, yeah. 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 But it was pipe tobacco. You're absolutely yeah. correct. But, yeah. The, yeah, we had some terrible tobaccos in this country. I mean, people, you know, if my feeling has always been if I'm going to gain 100 pounds eating chocolate, then let it be the best chocolate I can lay my hands on. German not, chocolate. Not what? German chocolate. Well, or yep. whatever. But let me gain weight on good food and good stuff, not crap. You know, I'm not. I don't want to gain a hundred pounds on McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah. You know? Right. And the same is true. If I'm going to smoke cigars, which I never did, because when I was a kid, all I could come get lay my hands on were Roy Tans and Muriels and God. and and. Uh, what were some of the other terrible ones? We were mentioning a few here. Dutch uh, Masters. Dutch Masters. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! I could never I could never go for those. So they were terrible. And so I never smoked cigars. And uh, and to this day I don't smoke them. But I'm sure if I had had some decent cigars, I would have appreciated them and gotten a taste for them. You, know. you should you should try some Havana stogies sometime. Yeah, you well, should try it. You know. This is what this is the one experience you need to have in your life, yeah. Alex. But if you're good, what I was going to say is, if you're going to get cancer from smoking, then at least smoke good stuff. You know? Exactly. Yeah. What is that? Uh, what is that, uh, John? This is a. Uh, it's a CAO. Comes with like a little wrapper on it. Yeah. And it's CA. It's, but it's a, uh, so I think it's a, um, a you know Dominican Republic probably, and um, and I have a little, uh, I have a little clipper here, mm-hmm. clip clip clip. Oh, you're a chopper, okay. I'll clip it off and. Oh, yeah, I've by the way, been, by the way great program we're out. having here, teaching people how to smoke cigars. And I would, I, what I would do is I would take a matchstick, and and jam it up the ass of a cigar. You can do that. Yeah. yeah. I can't light it in my apartment, though. I, I just live in a little studio in San Francisco, and if I lit this thing up the whole fucking place, the the, alarm, the fire alarm would probably go off. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um, anybody else here smoke cigars? I used to a little bit. Going out to the club would have Hemingway's, the short stories, because they're, they're pretty good yeah. and they're, they're small, so yeah. you could smoke those pretty quick. Yeah, what um, yeah. Wait so a minute, your that. green screen is hiding whatever that is. I'd also... Oh, there we go. I, smoke, also do, I uh, smoke Indonesian cigars because my wife is from Indonesia. So... Yeah. So I always want to go y- Yes, uh, Tony. I smoke a uh, few cigars now. You, what, okay. c- what cigars? Just the Chinese ones. Now I'm joking. <laughs> Chink, <laughs> Chink cigars. I, 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 but did he say that word again? The paper, Alex. Like I always thought, the paper of the cigar. You have to be careful with it. There's no paper in a cigar. No, like, it's um, it's leaf. That's leaf. leaf. It's oh. leaf. Yeah, it's wrapped in leaf. I was yeah. watching this thing on it. I mean, they said that can be toxic if you swallow it, though. 
What? Well, yeah, toxic you if you swallow what? The uh, like the remnants of it, like the uh, the how it's wrapped, the wrapping. I think the roach. No, that's just a, that's just, <laughs> that's, just <laughs> that's just natural leaf that's been uh, been cured. Yeah, you puff on it. Did yeah. that really get them high? Like they say, they were saying sometimes you can get like a high off of that. Yeah, if he has filtered. Well, if cigars. you inhale the smoke, you know you're gonna pass out. <laughs> I mean, you don't inhale a cigar; you just puff on it. You puff on. Why well, inhale? I Regular. definitely inhale. But there is a cancer you can get from smoking cigars. Yeah, sure. throat cancer. Hey, throat cancer, from, but also from, liver from cancer. Mouth and throat, yeah. I think there's a liver cancer throat. because yeah. because the uh, cigar uh, seeps into your mucous membranes mm. and yeah. can go to your liver and your whatever. So it's not like you can't get cancer from those either. You know, you know shit. Churchill no, gives you cancer. Churchill used to smoke about 40 cigars a day, and he saved the world. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, uh, that's true. On the other hand, uh, I used to smoke uh, chocolate. That was my great-grandfather. When I was a kid, I, I, uh, I, I smoked chocolate cigarettes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Remember the chocolate the cigarettes? Gum the gum ones, yeah. The gum ones, They were always stale, that gum. But they were good. Bubble gum ones. Well, bubble, bubble gum, gum ones. I hate no, those. That, that, that I hate it because then you just put them in your mouth and chew them, right? But you remember yeah. they had these peppermint ones that had like a, a phony flame at the end of it? Yeah, like yeah. they painted it red. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. That was a good thing to get your kids hooked on because they got very used to smoking. You know? Yep. <laughs> I'm sure the cigarette companies were backing that stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, William is having a real party over there. He's oh, yes, I am. Smoking cigars, drinking some booze. Uh, Bushmills, uh -huh. Irish whiskey. Bushmills, nice. Irish whiskey. You know, those are the two things. I, I quit smoking when I was 42. Okay, just stopped it. Best thing I ever did, by the way. Was, uh, that, when you, was that before or after KML? That was after KML. When I got to the quake is when I quit smoking. I remember. Yeah, I quit smoking. <laughs> and, and started uh, that white stuff up your nose. What? Oh, yeah. Then I, well, then I went to cocaine. <laughs> yeah, then you went to cocaine. <laughs> remember that comedian had that joke where he'd say, the best cigarette I ever had was after a double bypass. Who <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was thinking that uh, seven years ago, uh, Robin, Robin Pesson. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, no, I, I did. Well, Robin Williams also said about coke that uh, doing cocaine is, is a sign that you're making way too much money. Yeah, it's God's way you're making. Too God's much way money. of saying you're making too much money. Uh, uh, but I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I quit smoking, and I never was a drinker. So basically, I've had no fun since I was 42, okay? Well, you can start now, Alex. Yeah, it's a good time for me to start to start drinking, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I should yeah, become a, sure. just a raging alcoholic. I mean, it takes you maybe 20 years to get, uh, 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 you know, uh, jaundice or whatever they yeah, get but, in your liver. Just, just drink, like, super expensive uh, whiskey and wine, you yeah, know? Yeah, just stay drunk from now till the end of my life. Exactly. Yeah. I don't have to. I'm not going to get fired because I don't have a job anymore, right? Yeah, right. You know, uh, get more viewers on this thing for sure. And and my social security uh -huh. should pay for something good, you know. Uh, but uh, I just realized I can start collecting social security next year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I can't collect mine until I'm seventy-two. Why? Why are you seventy-two? They bumped me up from sixty-five. Why? I got a letter from the Social Security Administration. They're like, oh yeah, uh, you were at 65, but now we're gonna bump you up to 72. And I'm like, oh, you just fuck all the way off with you people. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought they gave you the choice. I, I, you, no. I, I never no, they didn't give me a choice. They were like, yeah, we're gonna bump you up to 72. I'm like, eh, fuck all the way off. Well, wait a minute, did you ever take any Social Security for any reason? No. Then the, the the age now is sixty six, I think, and you can take it early at about sixty two, which 62. I did. Which yeah. uh, you have they bump they bumped me to seventy. I would check. I would check with. No, them. I'd check that because that that ain't right. You have to sign up for Medicare at sixty five. You have to. 
Yeah, that's a lot, right? Yeah, so I would check. Yeah, would that's what I'm waiting for. I would for call Social Medicare. Security and I would yeah, say. Your Medicare, if you don't sign up for at 60, 64 and a half, you have to sign up for it. And by 65, you have to take it. Otherwise, you, you're going to get you, screwed uh, and get, get penalized. How did you find that out? That's 12, that's 12 years for me. Well, how did you find that out, though, William? They sent me a letter. Really? Yeah. That's not a scam. It might yeah, be a scam. It was actually from the Social Security Administration. I checked. It was all legit. And they were Same like, oh, no. Well, Did you, you call should, them? You should call them. You should call them. Yeah, and guys talk calling to Alex. yeah you're right. I should. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't. guys calling Alex. And don't call the Alex. number. Don't call the number on the paper. Mm -hmm. Call. Find an office and call them. Yeah. Because there are a lot well, of scams going around. If out I there. can start yeah. collecting it at 62, I'm, I'm going to start collecting it. I'm 64. I didn't know I could collect it at 62. You I can, mean, but it's just less amount. Well, by the way, Kevin, yeah, I got another one of can. those calls from Medicare, like the one I talked about the other day. Oh, what happened and, with that? And this time when he asked me for my ID number, I gave him four numbers, and then I said, it's 576, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but those no, the but you know what the he letters. did? You he just gave him the letters F-U-C-K-Y-O-U. No, but wait a minute. He 257. Gave, he gave me my complete ID number. And he said, would you just repeat that for me? Is that the number you have on your thing? And I just don't know where he got it, but I don't think it's that unavailable. It is. Huh? Now it is. No. Yeah, if he gave you your number, your number's out there now, so I'd just go mm -hmm. get it changed. Well, I talked to the people at uh, Social Security. They said, just check to see if there's anything on your account that through that i wouldn't do it i'd just go get it changed yeah yeah, they, yeah but they no. could wait they could wait for a year yeah but you know you give it to your doctor and he he calls it in and you give it to somebody else you give it to your pharmacy yeah, i mean he puts, it, 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 he puts it in his computer and all, and his computer is not secured and all of a sudden somebody hacks into his computer one day on a lark yeah, yeah. no they're supposed to be secure but you yeah, know. You know, all I'm saying, oh, all, 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 shit. All I'm saying is, I don't think that number is that unavailable to people. Let me put it that way. Okay. Boy, I have got quite the buzz going on. I Woo! know you seem to be. You seem to have gotten <laughs> uh, dr drunker and drunker as the show is going on. <laughs> Who do we have anybody else here used to get really drunk during the show? Scott Boddicker. Scott Boddicker. He took his shirt off one time. You don't remember that, do you? No, I mean, I mean, this way. That's okay. why he took that long break. He took that long break because he was embarrassed because he took his shirt off at the yeah. end. Hey, for the record, I don't get that wasted. I don't get white boy wasted it's at a all. Classic, classic Boddicker. I don't. I don't get that wasted. I'm not going to take my shirt off. So if that's what you're waiting for, no, eh, no we, not going to happen. No, we we don't want to. But we you have gotten progressively a little a little more. Shall we say loosey goosey on the show tonight? But that's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm beginning to believe the best way to participate in this broadcast and to listen to it is get drunk first. Mm. You know. <laughs> no, I like to do that. Huh? I think the best. I think the best way to do this is to get drunk during the broadcast. Yeah. Yes. How about How about you? Uh, you don't do drink, do you, Brian? On the show? On the show? Oh no, 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 not on the show. No, oh, no, okay. no, no. Okay. No. All right. All right. And and Jeff doesn't. And, yeah, I uh, tap wine all the time. I, I, I don't know. No, what. He does. He has wine. So I used yeah. to. I used to have some wine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not a drinker. I just never got into that. Oh, you hey. need to start, Alex. Listen. You really, yeah, at your I, age, you need to start. Well, now, I have vodka and Red Bull. That's a great drink. Oh, oh. incredible Hulk. Wow. Speedball. Anyway, I there's our speedball. I, I like this good. guy. There's our huh? theme song like playing. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, time for us to kind of uh, wrap this whole thing up. Uh, thanks to Jeff for joining us tonight. And thank you very much. Uh, um, oh, yes. Oh, ooh, spooky. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Brian Neary. And thank you to uh, John Larkin. And thank you to Tony uh, Magno. And... Uh, uh, we'll have to talk to him about his mother's uh, tombstone. They charged him by the letter. Uh, he saved two hundred dollars because it was Magno. Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that next time you call. Uh, thank you very much for uh, calling us tonight, William. And I hope you call again. Very enjoyable. I will. And of course, will. Kevin. Always a pleasure I'm, having you here. Yeah, I'm very sorry that I don't, but I will. Okay. More. Yeah, Everybody, cool. give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye to you. And hope we see you all tomorrow night. Bye-bye. 
there goes our citizen panel for tonight that's it that's all she wrote folks from here uh, the uh, the guess what's next? Yes, uh, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop is next. He'll be taking your calls on Skype, okay, at uh, Gabnet Live. Meanwhile, I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay. And by the way, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, you don't want to wind up like William, okay get the shot you'll feel a lot better for it and you'll have a few more freedoms available to you thanks everybody have a nice night see you tomorrow